You know, it is about time I see a comedy special that is released that I can sit back, I can enjoy, I can casually laugh, I can relate, I can envision the stories being told and the truth and reality behind all of it, as well as get to listen to a multi-talented, fascinated person who can also play the guitar, sing, a la Jamie Foxx as well can do this, but also put jokes inside the songs, pantomiming, as well as doing it to entertain the crowd more so rather than have them entertain each other. Welcome. What's poppin', y'all? We back here at the DeAndre Way. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you like this video. We gonna get right into it, y'all. So Adam Sandler's Stand Up, Love You just came out, I believe, a couple days ago. I just finished watching it. And this thing, it was really good. That's all I'm, I'm gonna say that. It was really good. I'm not gonna miss words. I don't need to add any extra adjectives to that. It was definitely well put together, I'd say. He had everything. It looked, honestly, it was very unique in the sense that at the beginning, it kind of seemed like one of his films because, you know, it's like four guys chasing this car and then he gets out the car and he's going into the venue and all this crazy stuff's going on. Like this kid has a picture of him and he, uh, a picture of him in his house, like he was stalking him and whatnot. And but it really was this old man putting up this old little kid up to this D just to get him to sign an autograph. Like little things like that remind me of an Adam Sandler movie. And the entrance, I believe, I mean, the beginning is everything. Like you got to encapsulate the audience. And he did that with like me wondering, like, what's going on? And then like him needing to use the dude's hoodie and the dog coming out and then the lady with her son in the hospital and it was, just, it was just a lot of stuff going on but it was encapsulating because we never really get to see those type of things in the stand-up usually stand-up it's like all right they walk out everyone claps hey you mother mothers i'm like okay same thing you know and then they just get into it but he had a whole little precursor to his whole show that was basically its own show in itself and it's funny because those things kept popping up later on in, during the show. Like the dog got a cameo appearance. The son in the hospital got a cameo appearance. It, it, was, it was dope. It was really, and then one of his people backstage came out, dressed up as Elvis, made a cameo appearance. So it was, it was dope in the fact that it wasn't just a typical stand-up routine. Going to go up here, do my thing, and then thank you all for coming, blah, 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 and we out you. We see that a lot. You know, that's, that's pretty typical. But he added the extra things. I didn't know Adam Sandler could play the guitar. I didn't know Adam Sandler could could carry a tune. I didn't know he I didn't know he had those elements in his back pocket. I didn't. And that's that's really what makes him you know great. I personally have never seen an Adam Sandler stand up before. This was the first one. And so I was excited. I love Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler, he's a stand-up dude. He doesn't let money define him. He does what he wants. He goes and plays pickup basketball casually all the time. Just looking at him walking down the street, you wouldn't imagine that he's a millionaire and one of the most famous actors in the world. And he's just a real dude. That's what I really appreciate him. He's a real dude, and what you see is what you get. And he's going to cuss you out if you need to get cussed out on. He's going to tell you you a sack of shit if you a sack of shit and that's you know truly what we're kind of meant we kind of miss from today's society is these famous celebrity figures being real human beings and being authentic rather than them always putting on a show and making themselves seem elevated or making themselves seem on a pedestal more than others so if this dude can do it anyone can do it but he comes from a different generation as well, and uh, I just hope, a I wish a lot of people could take notes, and I certainly took notes on just the way he carries himself and the way he acts and treats others and goes about his life. True authenticity and its finest form. 
we're gonna get into it uh but yes i explained the precursor to when uh he got there the venue is a little like grungy it seems i mean it doesn't look like the nicest venue in the world um but yes, we see the dogs, the puppets. The, he takes the hoodie from the bodyguard. The woman, in the hosp, the woman's son in the hospital, who's facetiming back, and he gets out there. And he he starts going in on you know doing his little thing, and he he's a storyteller. He's a storyteller. He's really calm with his approach. He's really kind of just making it sound like a regular conversation like this. He's not. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna. You know, we went out. To, we had the grass and uh, we cut it and there was some worms in the grass. You know what I mean? Like, he, he that's how he's giving it to you. And I appreciate he's not yelling in your face like Joe Rogan or always forcing audience members to kind of bring the joke out or just react off of them. He only did that one time, I believe, with the dude with the glasses, the redhead, and he was singing a song about him. But, yeah, no, he brought his own thing. I mean, even with the TV screen not working which i think it was that was part of the act um it was just really kind of dope to see him just really i felt like i was watching a movie in person like he needs to do a one-man show i think personally it, it would kill uh but yes <laughs> he an audience there's a part in the show to where the audience an audience member is arguing with another audience member and then he intertwines and like, hey, like, what are you guys yelling about? Blah, blah, blah. It's a joke. You're mad because they're laughing or something like that. He's like, everybody can laugh. Why my jokes? It's a laugh-free zone. I, I don't know if that was part of the show or not. It was kind of kind of off. I was just like, is this somebody really acting up in the audience? I thought it was about to get go down, coach. I didn't know if that was real or not. And he does a funny, the first song he does like a pantomime. He does pantomimes of songs. Um, not familiar 100% with the actual song it was the songs that he was doing like the beats but he's freestyling it essentially it's a it's a it's a it's a singing freestyle and I think that is lit because a lot of the things he does a dick jokes of course he does like the sex jokes which is you know he makes his own of course because it's only Adam Sandler can make them the way he does them but he's more it's more than that he talks, he has a uh, part where he talks about, oh, how we mumble under my breath. The mumble song, the mumble under your breath song. It's like, oh, I'm mumbling under my breath about how my boss sucks. And when you say this thing comes to me and then you leave and I'm telling you to shut the up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's clever. And I love it because I do those kind of things, too. That's that's one of my favorite things to do is pantomiming. And he is a master at it. He's a pro. I wish I could have seen this show live. I definitely hope he goes on a tour. I don't know if he does stand up tours or not. But yeah, it was lit. I mean, adding music to comedy is such a game changer. It's such it's such an element adder to where Adding comedy to music is regular music is not the easiest thing in the world. It's about your delivery, but it just makes everything kind of flow even better, especially if you have that kind of rhythmic musicality in your vocabulary and in your arsenal. And he got it. I I shouldn't be surprised. I just wasn't expecting uh, as many songs as he did. He did a lot of songs. I mean, one song literally lasted like eight minutes, I felt like. But it was it was all nice to hear. And he plays the guitar as well, which shook me. I didn't think this dude could sing, let alone play the guitar. And he was not playing no, like, easy one, two, three chords. He was playing some very difficult songs. I, I mean, I know I, I have a guitar, and I've tracked it, and it's not easy. I can play two songs, and that's it. And then, but singing at the same time, it's that's very impressive. And at certain parts... His show kind of started feeling like the Eric Andre show. If you don't know what that show is, check it out. It's a it's a mess, but that's the only reason I say that is because things were falling apart. Things were just kind of seeming like, what is going on? I'll say controlled Eric Andre. Eric Andre's show is definitely not controlled. His, his shit is going all over the place. This felt more controlled than that. 
And then he, yeah, the song, my favorite song, like I said earlier, was him muttering under his breath. And then he had the whip crack sounds and the horse. <laughs> Y'all, I was weak. It's genius, though. It's genius. And then he, a funny segment I, I wrote down was uh, the Botox dick <laughs> joke. I had never heard that one before. I heard a lot of the different ones, especially as of late. But that's a new one. I, I've never heard of that. And they're like, oh, does it go down? They're like, nah, it is down. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, that's clever. I like that. Um, but yes, his songs lasted a decent amount of time. I believe he was doing a song half of the show, like overall time. But it worked. It worked. A couple of them, he just went one song to the next and then went back to the first. Like, it was... It was it was very artistically well put and sound. Definitely enjoyed that. Like I said, the dog made a cameo appearance with the lady and the son, with the lady and her son in the hospital. I don't know if the son in the hospital was a real thing. I don't think it was. Um, and I'm sure the dog was trained to an extent. And his divorce song, oh my gosh, that song is a banger. He need to release some of these songs. Adam, you need to make your album. Put it out because it sounds the sound is like early 2000s soft rock slash alternative that real smooth like you can just listen to it vibe out and whatnot that is one of my favorite genres of just something i could turn on maybe in the car just chilling cruising and just kind of just vibing out and it's just flowing that he needs to release an album I, if you need Adam Sandler needs to release an album, put the music notes in the comments because he needs to release an album ASAP because I will buy it and go to the concert because then he'll do a comedy show at the music concert. You get bang for your buck, coach. Um, but yes, the song he sings about the guy with the drone is hilarious. And then the camera's slowly panning closer and closer to him. And he looks like an awkward, like not awkward dude, but he just looks like, oh, I don't want this attention and spotlight. He's trying to like keep himself together. But that was, it was tough for him. Cause he picked, you know, that he could tell that dude was just uncomfortable, but it was hilarious the way, you know, he's like, Oh, the drone, you use the drone to go spy on women at the beach. <laughs> I'm going to watch this again. This was so good. I think I'm going to watch it again. I say very good as in like it was very good quality everything. Um, yes, and he and he goes into the How song where the audience participated in it, um, which is cool. He added audience, you know, chime in and do their little part in the songs. That song in particular, which is dope. People were really getting into it and they were ready. Some of them were ready to hop on stage and do their own little tune. And that's... That's also an element of, you know, these stand-ups is like you can't keep it monotone the whole time. Is I mean like keeping the same energy the whole way. He started out really somber and then slowly brought it up a little bit. And then the music kind of had its own rhythm going down. And then he brought it back. And then he brought the music, music. And then he got the little audience coming even more. And so there's levels. There's a story to his whole entire routine, which is very dope to see. We don't get sto real stories anymore. We get these exaggerated, superficial, just pretty much blown up out of exacerbated stories, I'd say. And these stories didn't, these jokes, the stories with the jokes with the stories, as well as the songs, seemed true. A lot of people could relate to a lot of these things. Mostly the murmuring under your breath song. I can relate to that because I used to do that all the time to my bosses. No love for my old bosses. Most of them, at least. Um, there's a couple good ones. But yes, the relation is the most important thing. And if I can't connect with what, what you're saying and what's going on, or just like get completely bored of hearing you asking audience members questions and then going off that, then it ain't really that great to me. No, and I'm not going in on nobody in particular, but I'm just saying like I like how he is so original with it is so original with it and then we get this dude coming out in the elvis presley costume doing a whole number this number was kind of long too 
And he was sweating like a pig during the summertime, coach. I mean, he came out drenched. And I, I don't know if he was paying real old to Elvis because he was sweating a bunch back in the day, too, because they didn't really have AC like that, wearing them tight, hot, fluffed up clothes. But he did a good job, I think, with the Elvis impression. I'm not an Elvis fan. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like Elvis Presley. But I commend the dude for doing his little act and giving Adam a little break while we see the small interlude of a Elvis Presley impression. And with the song. He did a good job with the song, too. And he does a song, a closing song about comedy. And this closing song, it could make your tear come out your eye. I mean, it was... It, it, it hit a little deep. If you really love, like, pop culture, comedy, etc. He references a lot of old people that he used to work with, a lot of old comedians who, you know, some are still alive, but some are past, like Chris Farley, one of them. Um, you know, he mentioned Chris Rock, of course, and a whole slew of others. I wasn't about to write all their names down. But that was really dope to see because it felt like a good closing. It felt like a closing number to a movie to where, you know, you're seeing flashbacks of everything that happened in the whole movie itself. But this was a movie about some of his life, but also like the field that he's in. And it was on, dope that it was on the screen behind him. And it really kind of like put everything in perspective of I'm going to pay ode and homage to all these people that came before me, put some respect with them. Also, while giving you guys a song and, you know, some a few jokes in this one. And it felt like Closing Time by Semi-Sonic. That's kind of what it felt like. And it was kind of sad. It was really sad. I ain't gonna lie. It was kind of sad. But it was a good sad. Because it just makes you think, okay, life is short. Make an impact on the world the best way you can. And... Be good to people and just do something that will, you know, hold weight and have you help you be remembered. And that's not just in like, you know, if you're a celebrity or comedian or whatnot, but in anything, you know, and just remembering the people that passed and then remembering how that helped us get to where we are today and the good times that we did once have watching these people on TV or on stand up. And remembering and reminiscing on those good times because it is important to do that as well. And so that was really touching. It, it hit my soul a lot. It hit my soul a lot seeing that. Just and it also goes to show you what kind of dude he is. I mean, he had he had it and he knocked it out the park with that. And yeah, it was uh that was that was the show in a nutshell. I loved the rhythm of it, it really, I mean, if you don't like like music, then you ain't gonna like this stand up. I'm just gonna say it right now. But if you, if you like old, it brought me back to like early 2000s vibes, to be honest with you, the whole show, just the type of jokes he gives, the delivery. I mean, it's Adam Sandler, of course, so that's when he was releasing every single freaking movie you could possibly think of. And, him just kind of putting on his own variety show. It was pre it was dope because we just we never we don't see that. That's not something we see anymore. Like I love Kevin Hart, I love Dave Chappelle, Cat Williams, but they don't do that. They don't do that. And I think that he definitely inspired a lot of people with this. He inspired me with some things, and I I I liked it. I I really 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 liked it a lot, and I think y'all will too. So. In closing, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because he gave me something I wasn't expecting. He brought showmanship, musicianship. Only thing he didn't do was do a two-step, but, you know, he was jiving a little bit. He brought out all his tricks in his bag that... You know, or Adam Sandler S that really showed, you know, his full scope and roundedness uh, as an entertainer, per se, not just an actor or comedian. 
along with the cinematicness of the begin the intro and then the outro you know we left his met his wife and then they drove off to the song and whatnot it was real movie-esque it was real movie-esque it was dope an hour 15 movie you know that's kind of what it felt like and i he gave he just garnered more respect from me in general and i like i said i'm going to watch this again so if you haven't checked it out check out love you by adam sandler on netflix i doubt you will be disappointed this thing was this thing was very high quality to me and yeah if thank y'all for joining me for this review i appreciate y'all so much make sure to subscribe to the deandre way we on our way out here till next time y'all peace blessings deuces and have a great great rest of